Welcome. This video is going to take a look at using the ideas of stoichiometry, so using our molar ratios to make some predictions. So again, it's a funny word that means to use molar ratios to look at the relationship between reactants and products. So it requires that you have a balanced equation, the correct molar ratio, and that you're able to convert from grams to moles and moles to grams. So if we look at this first example, it says if 0.0400 moles of potassium, so I'm just going to go ahead and note right here, this is my beginning amount, is completely reacted with excess water. And excess water just means we have lots of it, so we don't have to worry about that. How many moles of hydrogen gas will be produced? Well, because I'm starting in moles and I'm being asked about moles, I can use my equation to do this because my equation tells me 2 moles of potassium produces 1 mole of H2. So I can set up a ratio. I write down what I have. I have 0 0.0400 moles of potassium. And I want to know about H2 based on my potassium. And that ratio says 1 over 2. So when I go ahead and multiply this, that means I should expect 0 0.0200 moles of hydrogen gas. That's it. So why is this so complicated? Well, because more often it, it's something like this problem. You have grams, 100 grams of water. I'm going to write this in on the equation. If I have 100 grams of water, it's allowed to react how many grams of H2 would I get? Now this is a little more complicated because I can't just set up my ratio of one hydrogen from two water because that ratio is a molar ratio. So now to find out how many grams of H2, I need three steps. I have to change this to moles and then predict my moles of hydrogen and then finally change that to grams. So I take my 100 grams of water And I find out how many moles that is. Well, I know one mole of water is going to weigh 18.02 because there's one oxygen at 16 grams and there's two hydrogen at 1.01 each. So when I go ahead and take 100 divided by 18.02, <coughs> excuse me, I have 5.50 moles of H2O. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that up there. So now I could take my 5.5 moles of H2O and I could predict how many moles of H2 that would be because I look at my balanced equation and I see the relationship between H2 and H2O is 1 over 2. So that means I can expect 2.75 moles of H2 if I have 5.5 moles of H2O. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this up here. And now I can finish up by taking my 2.75 moles of H2, and I'm going to convert that to grams. And what I know about grams and moles of H2 is one mole weighs 2.02 grams. So if I take 2.75 times my 2.02, I get 5.555 or 5.56 grams of H2. And if you're rounding, you end up with, you know, 5.60, 5.50. That's fine. We're all going to round a little bit different, and we're not going to worry too much about that at this point. But that's the basic process. So here's some hints to sum up. First, you have to check and be sure your equation is balanced. Then you have to decide... Are you starting in moles or are you starting in grams? If it's in moles, great, you can go right to step three and set up your molar ratio. But if it's in grams, you have to convert to moles first. And then you always use a molar ratio in stoichiometry. It's the only way to compare two different parts of a reaction. And then finally, if your final answer is asked to be in moles, you're done. But if you're asked to express it in grams, you need to convert it back from moles to grams. Okay, so here's an example. Propane C3H8 reacts with oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide and water. And I'm asking two questions. If you burn 10 moles of propane with excess oxygen, how many moles of CO2 will be produced? Or 
how many grams of oxygen would be produced from this 10 moles of propane. So I would encourage you to pause and try writing the balanced equation for starters. So there's my balanced equation, C3H8, one mole of it reacts with five moles of oxygen to produce three moles of CO2 and four moles of H2O. So question number one, if you burn 10 moles of propane, so 10 moles of C3H8, how many moles of CO2 would you get? So I'm gonna put CO2 over C3H8, and when I look at my balanced equation, I see I should get three CO2 from, from one mole of propane. So this means I could expect 30 moles of CO2. And I'm done because I started with moles and I'm being asked to calculate moles. Number two is gonna take a little more work. How many grams of oxygen would that take? So now I want grams of oxygen from 10 moles of propane. So I start out the same. I take my 10 moles of C3H8, and I find out how many moles of oxygen that would be. So I set up my ratio of O2 over propane, and now that ratio is 5 to 1. So we're talking 50 moles of O2. And to finish this problem, I now have to take my 50 moles of O2 and convert that to grams. And I know that one mole of oxygen gas is O2, so two times 16 would be 32 grams per mole. And when I go ahead and calculate that, I come up with 1,600 grams of O2. So here's another one for you to try. If you react five grams of hydrogen with an unlimited supply of oxygen, how many grams of water will be produced? So pause and see if you can write your balanced equation for starters. H2 plus O2 yields H2O. So I'm gonna need a two here and a two here for my balanced equation. So five grams of hydrogen, and I wanna know how many grams of water will be produced. So I have three steps to complete. First, I need to change my five grams of hydrogen to moles of hydrogen. So what I know about moles and grams of hydrogen is there's 2.02 grams in a mole. So this is 2.48 moles of H2. Now that I know how many moles of H2 I have, I can figure out how many moles of H2O that should produce. So 2.48 moles of H2 is gonna produce two moles of H2O from every two moles of H2. So this is easy math. It's also 2.48 moles of H2O. And then finally, I can convert that to grams. 2.48 moles of H2O. What I know about grams and moles for water is it's 18.02 grams because there's one oxygen and two hydrogen. So I would expect this to produce 44.6 grams of water.